This video is sponsored by the Ultimate Freelancing Bundle from StudyWebDevelopment.com, which gives you everything you need to start your freelancing business, including a 130-page in-depth guide, invoicing and client proposal templates, website templates, an SEO checklist, and much more. Visit the link in the description and use the code BRAD20 to get 25% off. Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about freelancing as a web developer and I just want to say that everything in this video is from my own personal experience and what I've learned. I'm not someone that has worked for a big corporation so my personal advice isn't the best in that area but being an entrepreneur, freelancing, running my own businesses is something that I've done for about a decade now. Okay, even to this day, my business is now focused on education, but I work for myself and it has a lot of parallels with freelancing. Um, so what we're going to do is talk about the pros and cons of freelancing as a web developer or programmer and also talk about things like what to do before you start, how to find work, how to deal with clients and so on. And I will say that freelancing isn't for everyone. It's one of many avenues that you can take as a developer, but hopefully this sheds a little light on it and helps you decide if, if that's what you want to do or not. And then maybe you can take something away from this presentation that'll help you in the future. Okay, I'm not promoting or discouraging freelancing. I'm just sharing my experience and my thoughts on it. All right, so when it comes to pros and cons, I'd say that there's an equal amount of pros and cons. It just depends on the person and which ones matter to them the most. So for the pros, the, the main overall advantage is freedom and flexibility. Not all of us were made for nine to five jobs and punch clocks. Freelancing really gives you a, a lot of flexibility in many areas, such as where you work. So you could work from home in your pajamas. You could have your own office space. You could work from a Starbucks or a bookstore, anywhere you want. Also, anytime you want, you can create your own hours. Um, if you want to sleep all day and work second or third shift, you can do that. But you have to be someone that will actually be motivated to work and not say, you know, I'm tired, forget it, I'll, I'll work twice as much tomorrow. Because chances are you won't. So you have to be very disciplined in order to be a freelancer. And I'm going to talk about who freelancing is not for in, the next, in, in another slide. So another advantage is being able to pick and choose which projects you take on and you, and you want to work on, which is really something you can't do if you're working for a company. Now, I would suggest really thinking about it before denying work, unless the client is being very unreasonable. Uh, I've actually had someone ask me for a social network that was, quote, similar to LinkedIn to be built by myself within three months for $1,000, I think it was, something ridiculous like that. Um, now, when you're just starting out with little to no experience, you probably won't, won't be making a killing, but you also don't want to be taking advantage of. So uh, you really need to know how to say no to people. Some people are just very out of touch with what goes into building a social network or an e-commerce site or something like that. And then the, the other reason that I would reject an offer is if it's something that just isn't possible for me to do. Um, if it's something that is, the technology is just way beyond what I know or if the timeline is too short, if I know that I just can't, I can't do it no matter what, then I would reject it. Um, other than that, I, I think I would have taken on just about anything as long as I knew it was possible for me to do. Uh, unless, of course, my plate was absolutely full and I couldn't, I couldn't do any other work, which is a good thing. So the next one uh, can be a pro or a con, depending on who you are. I'm an extreme introvert, so I've always enjoyed working alone, so it's a pro to me. Um, it may not be the healthiest thing, as, you know, as healthy as working with people, but I find it much less stressful and much more peaceful. Um, if you're an extrovert and you always have to be around people all day, uh, then this is definitely a negative uh, for instance, my wife is a hairdresser and she's very outgoing and she would go nuts doing what I do and she tells me that all the time. All right, so what are some of the cons or disadvantages of being a freelancer and working for yourself? I would say unpredictability is a huge one. When I was freelancing, I would have weeks or months where I was rolling in dough because I maybe I got two big deposits on a couple jobs, but then the next month I made significantly less. So what I would suggest is to really manage your money well 
and maybe even take everything you make and put it into the bank and then give yourself a salary so that you create your own steadiness of income because it's not going to come naturally when you're freelancing. So another disadvantage is you have no benefits being a freelancer. You have to buy your, and manage your own health insurance, which is actually something I'm going through right now, which just sucks. Um, you also get no retirement, no 401k or anything like that. Okay, um, lack of community, again, this depends on the person, but even speaking as an introvert, it would be nice to have someone to bounce ideas off of and stuff in the flesh. I mean, I do have a lot of communication through email and stuff like that with people, um, but having that community of developers and coworkers can be nice. Motivation can also be an issue for some people. Um, it's up to you to create your schedule and stick to it. In the next slide, I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about some qualities that people may have that may prevent them from being a successful freelancer. All right, separation from work and home is another big one. Many people that work from home have a hard time not checking emails, not doing work throughout the day. Uh, often it's very sporadic and you shouldn't do that. You should really try and set a solid schedule and follow it as much as you can so that you can have your family time or your time with your friends or whatever it is you like to do instead of, you know, working all around the clock. All right, so by no means am, am I making this video to either glamorize freelancing or discourage it. Uh, but it is not for everybody. In fact, there are a lot of people that it's it's not for. Um, and one of the, the purposes of this video is to help you guys realize if it is for you or not. Now, I'm not saying if you have any of these issues or traits, you shouldn't be a freelancer. In fact, I have some of these. Maybe if you know you have every single one, you shouldn't. You definitely shouldn't. Um, but a couple can be overlooked or, or even better, they can be fixed. So some traits of people that that at least should think twice before being a freelancer are if you have trouble with motivation you know motivating yourself to to write code or to do anything to to do with managing your business if you lack that passion and that energy then things are going to be difficult and you're probably better just working a nine to five job um, if you have trouble managing your time or if you're easily distracted you may have issues setting a schedule and sticking to it. Um, don't pause your work for two hours to go play a video game. Uh, and it's hard because technically you can do that. You, you, know, you don't have a boss over your shoulder that's watching you, but you won't be successful, okay, if you're doing that all the time, things like that. So the next one, trouble dealing with clients. This is one that I definitely ha had issues with and I still have. So this is a, a good example of something that you can have but still be successful. And I just had to work on my communication skills and just, just tolerating pushy clients and things like that. I actually have a video on how to deal with difficult clients if you want to check that out. So if you hate being alone, a freelancing web developer or programmer may not be the best path because most freelancers do work alone. And if you don't like to learn, I would say programming and technology in general may not be the best path because things are always changing and you're always, always having to learn more. Um, that's one of the, th the, the things about development. I wouldn't say one of the bad things because I enjoy it. Uh, most developers do. Um, I'm guessing if you watch this channel, you probably don't have this problem because my videos are, that's the sole purpose is to learn. So um, most of you guys probably don't have to worry about this, but uh, if, you know, if someone doesn't like to learn, they're probably not going to want to be a web developer or a programmer in general. All right, so I hope that that didn't put freelancing in too much of a negative light. I just want to be 100% honest, and I don't want to steer people down the wrong path. Freelancing was actually really great for me. It led me to have a great, uh, successful life being an entrepreneur. So it, it was a great thing for me, but it's just a fact that it's not for every single person, every, every developer. All right, so let's say freelancing is for you. Where do you start? So first of all, you want to learn as much as you can so that you can provide the services that people need and you can actually get the jobs done. You need to decide the scope of what you're going to offer as far as services and technology. Um, are you going to do front-end UI, web design, WordPress, Drupal, full-stack JavaScript, you know, Node.js, um, Python, what, what is it that you want to specialize in? And I'm not saying that you should never take a project that isn't 
in your specialty, but you should have some kind of foundation of what you do. Um, if you're the WordPress guy, people are going to come to you for WordPress and you're going to be very popular for that specific thing. If you're the UI guy, people will come to you for front end stuff and you'll probably specialize in things like React or Angular, things that will that allow you to build really cool dynamic interfaces. Um, if you specialize in large web applications, you'll need to know, you know, a back end um, language and, and database, something like MySQL or MongoDB. Um, you probably already have some kind of skill set and you want to build on that. If you're looking for something to specialize in, then go on sites like Upwork and look at the projects that are being offered and, and what, are they, what, what are they asking for. Now, once you have some skills and you're able to build things and create projects, you want to build up your business plan. What do you expect to accomplish? Uh, and, and be realistic. Also, come up with your pricing. Create your contracts and invoices. In fact, the sponsor for this video, the Freelancing Bundle, includes sample invoices and everything you need to get set up to be a freelancer. So if you're interested, I would definitely suggest checking that out. I'd also suggest meeting with an accountant to discuss taxes and stuff like that. Once I got an accountant, things were so much easier because I didn't really have a clue what I was doing in that aspect and it was just a, a real pain in the ass to do on my own so he, he helped me out with a lot um, you also want to build your website and your brand you need a place where people can see your services and what you offer and I realize when you're just starting out it's hard to create a portfolio but it doesn't matter or it doesn't really matter if the items in your portfolio are actually from paying clients they could be your own projects or they could be something you did for a family member or a friend or maybe a website you even built for free for like a local business a local pizza shop something like that anything that shows that you can actually put something together okay these are the things that I would suggest doing before you actually start looking for work so once you're ready, where do you find work? These are all the things that helped me out. So uh, of course you have your websites that were created to connect freelancers with clients. And I'm gonna give you a list of those uh, resources for those sites in the next slide. Now a lot of people do criticize these sites because there's, there's a lot of freelancers, usually from more poorer countries, that will apply for a job for just a ridiculous amount. And that's what you're competing with. And this used to piss me off, and it still does, because I feel like they're lowering the value of, of web development in general, of programming, on a global scale. And I realize they're struggling, and they just want whatever they can get, but ultimately they're hurting themselves if they plan on staying in this field. So just be aware that you, you will be dealing with that. All right, but not everyone wants the cheapest third world programmer and I don't mean to offend anybody when I say that I'm not talking about any specific country or anything I'm just being very honest and I say how I feel but anyway many people realize that if they hire a guy to build a large website for a hundred bucks ten times out of ten they're not gonna get a good product and they're gonna they're gonna have to start from square one anyways now if you get some feedback on your profile on these sites you're going to be looked at, or some good feedback, I should say. You're going to be looked at as someone that can do the job. And I'm not pulling this out of my ass. I actually had this exact experience. Um, when they see that other people are leaving these really good reviews and you gave them what they want, they're going, they're going to want to, to have you do their work, um, even if you're charging more than the other guys. All right, so just remember that uh, at first it's going to be tough because you're not going to have any reputation but once you you build that up you might have to do a couple jobs for a really you know small amount of money but just get those reviews so next you have online or social networking so facebook linkedin other professional based networks you want to join groups get yourself out there and and let everyone know what you do even for your personal accounts let let all the people that you went to high school with on facebook know that you build websites or web apps and if they if either they or someone they know has been looking to put a website together maybe they'll they'll contact you all right, in addition to online networking, 
you can do some real life networking. So go to conferences, meetups, conventions, anything to do with technology and just network with people. You might find a bigger company looking to outsource to a freelancer. And I've had quite a few of those jobs in the past. I enjoyed those because I got to deal with people that actually knew what went into a project and they also pay very well. And that's something I haven't really mentioned yet is that you can get regular clients that you know want a website for their restaurant or something like that or you can get other developers that have projects that they just don't have time for or maybe they're they don't know enough and they need someone with that with a with more skill um, I've had quite a few of those and, and those pay off very well also advertising may be something that you want to do um, I did a a, a um, uh, an ad in my local paper for web design and computer repair when I started out and I, I got quite a few calls on that uh, it was the only one in the paper it was a smaller paper so it wasn't it wasn't expensive um, this was quite a while ago I'm, I'm not sure how effective this would be now but then you also have online advertising with like AdWords or Facebook or even other websites that have ad spots available and you could also publish um, quality content on your own website so create a blog um, specialize in you know development topics this will drive traffic to your site and expose your services to people when I had my tech guy web solutions site I did a blog post maybe every other day and at one point I was getting a ton of traffic from Google and I know that these days SEO is tougher being found on the internet is tougher but it can still be done all right, so these are just a few of the things that had have worked for me in the past one way or another some are better than others but if anyone else has any other tips you can go ahead and leave those in the comments uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys have experience with with some of this stuff as well so this is a list of sites that I compiled where you may want to start looking for projects we have a bunch of freelance based sites also sites like Craigslist um, even github and stack overflow I believe have a job section and you also have more traditional job sites like indeed and and, and uh, monster sites like that and I know a lot of these postings are for actual company positions but it doesn't hurt to look and see if there's anyone willing to outsource projects to you um, and I'm not going to go through and read all these but just check some of them out even if you're not ready at least you can get an idea of what's out there and what's being asked for alright so the last thing that I want to say is to just be confident when you're working for yourself it's very overwhelming um, you're not going to be an expert when you first start it may seem a little awkward dealing with your first couple clients especially if you're like me and you're more of an introvert but trust me it gets easier as you as you go on um, you're gonna build your skills with people and with your your development knowledge as each project completes okay or as you complete each project and as far as being scared to take on projects uh, don't be unless like I said before you know you can't do it or if it's too much for one person or, or maybe it's a technology you've never even heard of things like that other than that you'll be able to figure it out uh, I can tell you from my experience that I had very very few projects where the client explained what they wanted and it just popped right in my head what I was gonna do uh, it, it just doesn't work like that I would have to do a lot of research and figure out what technologies what plugins I'm gonna use things like that uh, and I just figured it out as I went along so as long as you try your hardest and you have patience and ambition you'll get it done and you'll do a great job so don't let any low self-esteem stop you from thriving and then just make sure you give the client a realistic timeline and I've said this to you guys before in other videos never give a shorter timeline just to sound good make sure you give them a longer timeline and then if you're done sooner than that it's a nice surprise to them okay um, so that's going to be it guys uh, hopefully you enjoyed this and it helped you both figure out if freelancing is right for you as well as how to get started um, if you liked it please hit that like button and I will see you in the next video hey guys one of the best if not the best resource that I can refer you to for starting a freelance business is at studywebdevelopment.com slash freelancing the creator Kyle shared it with me and I can personally vouch that this bundle is well worth it 
and it gives you a 130 page guide to freelancing and also comes packaged with things like an invoicing template, client proposals, HTML, CSS templates, a portfolio website, access to a private Facebook community, and much more. So use the code BRAD20 and get 25% off today.